Hello, thanks very much for joining us for this special edition of Talking Europe. Coming to you today from Brussels and the European Development Days. Now, this is an event that's known as the Davos of Development, bringing together people involved in all aspects of development from here in Europe and from across the world. Now, as a combined entity, the European Union is, in fact, the world's biggest single contributor to international development. It totaled over 74 billion euros last year. Now, in this program today, I'm very pleased to be speaking to uh, the man who's in charge of it all, if you will, the European Union's Development Commissioner, Neven Mimica. Hello, thanks for being with us. Hello. And uh, we've also got with us in the studio today the President of Rwanda since the year 2000, Paul Kagame. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Well, I'm uh, just going to start off, uh, you know, quite general for our audience. The topics here at the European Development Days are absolutely vast. Um, as the EU prepares for a new commission to come in, new development budgets and aims, what, Commissioner Mimitsa, would you say are the key development goals for the European Union? Yeah, the global UN Sustainable Development Goals agenda might look very complicated, very interlinked with the number 17 goals to be, to be achieved by 2030. But when you look into the depths and the very structure and the very final ultimate goal of, of, of this sustainability network, actually it's about poverty, eradicating poverty. This is a focus. This is the, the first level of, of, of a sustainable development engagement for the European Union, but for all other countries in the world, because this, this Sustainable Development Goals agenda is universal agenda. It's equally important for everybody. We have to pass from, from, from uh, eradicating poverty by uh, increasing economic or GDP growth only mm -hmm. to, to, to the level where we have sustainable a sustainable economic growth where we have sustainable social development and sustainable environmental mm -hmm. development so it's about sustainability of our growth when it comes to sustainability we are still all developing countries so we all have a work to do to, to, to reach the level of sustainability of our development. A work in progress, perhaps. Uh, President Kagami, uh, your country has received a lot of foreign aid, uh, particularly, of course, to help it move on from the 1994 genocide. Uh, it's obviously a big question, but what broadly has foreign development brought to Rwanda? Foreign development has uh, brought uh, many things to Rwanda. In fact, from the time of uh, humanitarian emergency situation. They filled that huge gap that uh, was there with what could address those emergencies. And alongside that, and after we had gone through the emergency situation, a lot of assistance came in for our development. Mm -hmm. And development in this case uh, is a responsibility of two sides. One is we ourselves, the recipient side, but also the donors. Mm. And we all come together to make sure that we address the poverty that is uh, experienced, or was <coughs> experienced in my country, but experienced across our continent. And uh, on our side, we've really got to make sure that we put the necessary, the right infrastructure in place mm -hmm. to actually utilize this mm -hmm. uh, assistance that comes our way to make the impact on the ground, mm. to enable the country to grow its economy, to also make that growth inclusive and uh, continued partnership between the recipient and the donor countries is extremely important mm -hmm. and we have to be looking at not just the volume of what is flowing but also mm -hmm. the quality of the outcomes. Um, now a couple of years ago, I think it was 2016, uh, you said that it was time for your country to set a deadline to end its uh, dependency on foreign aid. Uh, that's not happened yet. Rwanda is still receiving a lot of development funds. I think it was over a billion US dollars in 2016. Um, have, you, have you fixed a, a deadline as such? Not really. I think sometimes people just uh, misinterpret what is being said for various reasons. But the, 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 the bottom line here for us is, can we utilize aid that is given to us properly to the point that we build 
the foundation necessary for our people to keep doing what they ought to do that falls within their aspirations and uh, be able to stand on their own feet. I, I think the principal standard as, as we know it, in our case, at least that is our ambition, is to make sure that as we get more aid, we keep needing less and less aid. Mm -hmm. So, so it's you, a you deadline that will fix you, itself, you perhaps. Really, yes, you can't uh -huh. really put a date mm -hmm. on, on this and say, by this day, yeah. I will. No, well, but, but that it, it's a kind of ambition and a framework mm -hmm. which you have to operate in. But uh, it's not a switch on and off kind of situation. Uh, Commissioner Mimitsa, at the EU level, uh, there's something new called the uh, Africa-EU Alliance, uh, which we're told involves a shift from aid in the traditional sense to encouraging investments. Um, now, private entities were always able to make investments mm -hmm. in any country if they wanted to. What's different about this? Yes, Europe, Europe and Africa are really two twin continents, I would say. Uh, and, and there are a lot of, lot of good reasons to, 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 uh, uh, and arguments to explain why we are so interlinked politically, uh, economically, in investment, in trade, in uh, m many other areas. But we, and, and we are really developing a strong partnership uh, between Europe and Africa. But so what is it about we, changing the relationship? But what, yes, what we went, wanted to do with, with, uh, with us, uh, launching the, the idea of, of alliance uh, on, on sustainable investments and job is to, to strengthen the economic dimension uh, of our, of our mm -hmm. uh, uh, alliance, of our partnership. Uh, and, and therefore, we would like to, to move much more towards the, the support of, of a private sector investment in creating new jobs uh, in Africa. But it's not only about creating jobs, it's also about employability, improving the edu educational and health uh, system. Human development is so important, uh, as important as, as employment. Employability is equally important. Uh, that's, that's what we are focusing and on. When we're talking, and when we're talking about private yeah. or investment uh, coming into this, uh, can the EU be sure that uh, that money will be going in favour of the same goals mm -hmm. as the public money would be from the EU? Uh, we have we have developed a strong dialogue uh, with with our partners, especially in Africa, and and all our development projects are really geared by 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 the sense of ownership that we would like to uh, to, to, to develop uh, in, in in our uh, partner countries because you cannot succeed in 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 in, in eradicating poverty and in 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 uh, meeting and reaching the development goals if there is not a strong political leadership clear political vision and uh, and the strong ownership of the of the development economic and political mm. processes uh, in the country so we really want to 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 do it not as a european input or european recipe for the uh, for the development projects in uh, our uh, uh, partner mm -hmm. countries but to have it as as a, as a joint efforts yeah. that supports and accompanies the, the 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 development priorities of the of of, of partner countries uh, coming back to you, President Kagame, um, Rwanda is often held up as an example of a country that, uh, of course, partly through this development uh, support, has uh, seen greater economic growth, stability. Uh, however, recently some social indicators in Rwanda have been dropping off. Uh, for example, some World Bank data shows that uh, uh, secondary school enrollment is, is dropped down to 36%, and 38% of children aged under five is said to be in chronic malnutrition, which is among one of the highest levels in the world. Um, considering the favourable economic data and development that we've seen in Rwanda, how is this development backslide on those social indicators coming about? Well, to begin with, it's not backsliding. It's not dropping of you know, these numbers. It's actually that the situation has been bad from the beginning. And our situation has been such that almost everything is a priority or has been a priority. So we have had to do too many things at the same time. Mm. And in, in, in that case, we have made good progress in uh, some sectors and we have been slow on others. Mm. But the, the two areas that you have referred to are things we are now paying much attention to. And we want to make sure that we register 
uh, significant progress on them in a, the mm. next few years, in a short time. And already uh, the mechanisms and the money and uh, everybody is ready to go. We are actually working on it as we speak. Mm. So it's not that anything has gone down. No, it's that everything almost has been down. Mm. <laughs> We're just there, trying to lift things up. And there, there is, as we were saying, a question about the focus on which areas of uh, development, where to put money. Yes. Uh, we know that uh, Rwanda had a debt write-off uh, in 2006. It has taken on quite a lot of debt since then, about 50% of GDP. And there are some major public investments uh, based on this uh, borrowed money that have been questioned, um, such as investments in Rwanda Air, which has a, a $50 uh, million dollar annual deficit, um, or perhaps a £30 million pound sponsorship deal with Arsenal Football Club for Visit Rwanda. Rwanda. Just in light of this sort of acknowledgement of the development needs in Rwanda, uh, is your government perhaps do a rethink on where it's spending this borrowed money on, on these projects that perhaps it's hard to see where the benefits are for the people of Rwanda? No, I think, I think uh, there are people who don't invest their time in reading what is happening. In Rwanda, there is no such a, a, a problem. One, I have to inform you that uh, our borrowing capacity is actually still huge. It's not at 50%, as you say, it's actually 30, about 32%. Mm. So we still have that gap of about 18%. But it's not about how much it's, the country's borrowing, it's about where the borrowed money is being put. That, that's what I'm saying. But I'm starting with that because you are the one who brought up the issue of the debt. But going to specific areas, if you look at, for example, how much ground we have covered in ensuring that the country is food secure. Mm. It is for the first time in the life of our country that we are now food secure and have registered growth in the area of agriculture. That means being able to feed our people mm. and even for export, that's one. Mm. If you look at how much we put, we spend in our national budget on health, by the way, the health outcomes are the best in terms of what, where we have been and where we are, mm -hmm. the most significant change in the health sector that you can talk about in the whole world. It's not just about mm -hmm. Africa. Mm -hmm. That's one. So you feel you're spending your money in the right place? Absolutely. We are spending our money in the right So you see, people are confusing. I mean, if they should, for example, even with the money we put in uh, Arsenal, football, and so on, I think people just. This is why I said people don't have time to think and relate things. We have actually registered benefits. If you look at how much money is coming in through tourism and related with the, mm -hmm. you know, what has been the, the attraction and by what means. Actually, this investment has superseded uh, mm -hmm. the money we put in by many factors okay. and, and the benefits are real. They are there. We can count the numbers. Okay. We are now getting 1.2, no, 1.3 actually now, tourists every year in Rwanda from down like 400,000. Uh, mm -hmm. So it has more than uh, or more or less uh, tripled. Mm. So I don't know what people are talking about, but the results on the ground say completely different things. Even in education where we still have to make a lot of improvement. Mm. In fact, the, the, the uh, access that we have in Rwanda to education by our people is the highest in sub-Saharan Africa. But improving secondary school enrollment, for example, now, is that a goal for you? No, we are, absolutely. Now we are working on the quality of that education mm -mm. because education is not just about access, it's also about quality. Mm. That's what we are working on. And we are putting money where that is going to be uh, okay significantly improved. We're looking at, um, of course, you know, there are many sort of those on the ground aspects we can look at and the economy, um, but a more kind of overarching uh, aspect, one of the UN Sustainable Development Goals, you mentioned there are 17 of them. One of them is promoting peace, uh, which of course has returned to Rwanda, as we've seen, justice for all and strong institutions. Mm -hmm. Now on that second point, justice for all, um, you know, it, it seems to demand that a country's human rights record be examined. Commissioner Mimitsa, the EU annual report on human rights for 2018, uh, focusing on Rwanda, said that uh, there are continued reports of serious violations of civil and political rights. How much is that a concern for you when it comes to dividing, uh, providing development, uh, funding and investment? 
the European development policy is very much rights-based policy or human rights-based policy and we accompany all of our development projects with a strong policy dialogue with the, uh, and political dialogue with our partner countries. So uh, uh, human rights, rule of law, good governance, uh, democratic uh, values are uh, part of our uh, policy dialogue, political dialogue with, uh, with partner countries. But uh, we do not, of course, have a do not have a direct conditionality link. Mm. It's, it's, it's a kind of a, of, of a joint effort to, to reach the higher level of, of development together with a higher level of human, uh, human rights, uh, respect for example, of human if, rights. If uh, the, the, United, uh, the European Union's own human rights reporting found serious violations, uh, surely that demands a bit of a rethink on the, the strategy, the development partnership that we've been discussing? We, we have uh, instruments, we have a, a policy, we have a, even formal uh, legal documents, international agreement like Cotonou agreement uh, with, with African Pacific and Caribbean countries where there is a, uh, there are provisions on, on mm -hmm. I would say, suspending uh, aid uh, programs in case of a really serious human rights uh, abuses. And, uh, but but uh, in many cases uh, uh, we, we, we see that we can really run the, the boss track of improving development and improving human rights uh, uh, seen in, our, in, in mm. partner countries. When it comes to Rwanda, I would say that, that, that I always uh, say not only because I'm sitting here with the president of uh, Rwanda, but uh, I always uh, give Rwanda as an example what could be done in development efforts within, within one generation. Economically? Uh, well, generally, economically, politically, uh, in terms of uh, stability of, of national uh, mm -hmm. reconciliation, because it, it, it's been only 25 years that, that the genocide uh, against uh, the Tutsi happened in, in, in Rwanda. These were the darkest hours of, of history, actually. We were just together mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in uh, April uh, on, uh, uh, on, on commemorating 21st anniversary of, of genocide yes. against the Tutsi. So, so departing from, from, from that, uh, that point mm. of history, such a tragical one, uh, and, and coming to the present level of, 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 of development of overall situation in Rwanda is, is example. It's exemplary. Let President me say something yeah. to that because I, I think uh, this kind of discussion which has gone on for a very long time around sounds a bit cynical in a sense. In, in fact, it's like the tragic situation of 1994 isn't considered even a, a violation of human rights. It has now gone into the background. Those who are responsible for it, those who are associated with it, are now talking about something else. According to them, the situation in Rwanda is that of human rights violation even more than that tragic situation. I, I think that's what we are talking about. So well, just for example, there just, was an uh, Amnesty International Rights Report in t the lead up to the 2017 election you, that talks about opposition politicians, journalists, human rights defenders being jailed, physically attacked, even killed. I think you're interested in Forced just into exile or silence. I'm just interested in I think you are your interested in idea of that assessment raising of your, your views to the audience so that you influence them by yeah, the, what well, you're the European asking. Union Why don't sees you itself very much as an exporter of, of human rights and a defender of human rights. So why so can't you let me answer this? I'm very interested in Otherwise, your Otherwise, you, you are going to ask and then answer yourself. I'm very interested in time. your answer. I'm giving you some context no, on why giving, I'm asking. You're asking and giving answer at the same time. So so please tell me, what do you make of this assessment? I think it's, it's just ridiculous because there is nothing like human rights minus these things we are talking about. What we are talking about in terms of development, these are human rights. Mm. Development, the schools, education, health, and uh, food security. And, you know, when you see now, the level of poverty has decreased almost by 60 mm -hmm. percent. So we, these people, these human beings with improved lives, 
and participating in that themselves to improve their own lives gets lost in all, what the whole list you've been spelling out as if uh, you know what is in Rwanda is, is really hell. In fact, forgetting the hell that we have gone through that we stood against and sorted out when you were there just talking about mm -mm. more or less nonsense because do you reject the accusations, for example, from Amnesty rubbish, International? It's rubbish, absolute rubbish. You, you reject Rwanda that. is completely different from mm -hmm. what it was 25 years ago. In fact, maybe you need to be looking around in Europe. You are violating people's rights. When we have this problem of people being bundled and sent back to sink in the Mediterranean and so on, and so many people being mistreated in mm -hmm. your own countries, why don't you talk about your human rights and stop just offloading everything? Well, this is a development world. conversation, so no, in the context not, of development. You are not the one to determine what conversation okay. or what points to raise in any conversation. We are asking questions, this is what I'm saying. You are asking questions and you are giving yourself answers. Well, uh, Commissioner Mimitsa, uh, just in the context of development, uh, how much is the European Union tracking on human rights? As I said, it's not explicitly one of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Oh, yeah, one of the last 17 development goals is about uh, peaceful societies, mm. uh, stable societies, which which includes also the, the, the respect of all of the of the of human rights, of uh, all of the democratic values, rules of law. So, so therefore, we really, as I, as I try to explain, we have this comprehensive approach where we would like to to discuss, to talk to, to our partner countries on all levels of, of, of uh, political dialogues. Yes, human rights, uh, respect of human rights is part of this mm -mm. political dialogue, but our development cooperation is a part of our, uh, uh, of our overall partnership uh, with, uh, with, with, with uh, each and every uh, country. So it should be taken uh, uh, together, and we are doing it together in a, in a, in a in a dialogue, in a conversation, in a in in a, in a very open and 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 and, and clear uh, clear interlinkage between uh, between the the two aspects uh, of. And you really you really need to stop this uh, superiority complex nonsense about human rights. You you think you are the only ones who respect human rights, or others? It's about violating human rights. No, we've fought for human rights and freedoms of our people much better and more than anyone, including you people who keep talking about this nonsense. Where we have taken our country from and where it is now speaks for itself. The rest of the story is just comes from this complex. You know, the, 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 these two worlds where there are people who know anything, everything about human rights and all kinds of things, and another world where people are just people who don't know. But these are our human rights. It's not uh, uh, when we respect the things we respect in our countries. It's not for you. It's not for anybody else. It's for ourselves. Is it not so universal? So you don't see it right. there. You do, yes, it is universal. But you don't mm. see it there. If it is universal and you believe it, mm. then you don't become the judge yourself. You don't start telling the others what to do, what they should not do, or that they are, what they are doing is not to your satisfaction. Who are you? Well, I'm not Who sure if we're talking about me personally. Well, you are the one actually raising these questions. So I think you better interpret it properly so that it is well understood. Okay. I could see you are asking questions in a manner that you want to influence the ones listening to us. But that's not correct. Okay. Yeah. I'm raising it uh, once again in the context of the United Nations Development Goals. No, United Nations is, is us. You of see, course. United Nations is not something alien somewhere else. Yeah. It's actually us. We participate. And the in framework United for this entire development. And by the way, I had been leading the Millennium Development Goals before Sustainable Development Goals. Mm. I was the co chair of that with other leaders and some of the leaders in Europe. Mm. So you, you, you don't turn around, it's like you want... So you believe that there should be scrutiny on human rights in Europe, in Africa, no, in I all I believe countries. that you shouldn't be there belittling Africans or leaders of Africa who are trying oh, to... Oh, no, but the best. conversation about migration is a real conversation about human rights. So you believe that there are valid human rights concerns to be taken into account in this conversation? Even in Europe, 
not in Africa. Not in, in Africa. In Europe. In, in Europe, not only in Africa. Not, of course. Yes. Well, thank you both very much. I Unfortunately, that is all we have time for. President Paul Kagame of Rwanda and the EU's Development Commissioner, Neven Mimitsa. Thank you both for your time. Thank you as well for watching this edition of Talking Europe. Hope to see you soon for more European news on France 24.